pizza and you're watching the Amamir Shore. Thanks, Ross. Welcome to the MMA Show. I'm the Muscle Mole. Master Wang. B for the CP. Thanks for all your worried messages. I'm back. A worried message is one. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, look, pal. Appreciate it. Okay, straight into UFC 121. Main cards. Brock Lesnar. Cain Velasquez. <sighs> he's big. He's bearded. <laughs> yeah, and he's fighting a Mexican. Hey, come on. There's what never been... What, what more could you want? What more could you want for a main event? It's okay, Master Y. How do you see it? There's never been a Mex Mexican heavyweight champ. It is notorious, and it's not a... So, uh, this may sound racial, but Mexicans are generally small guys. Therefore, there's never been a Mexican heavyweight champ. Cain Valesquez... Well, there's been a lot of technical Mexican boxers and such. Like It's not it's not a skill set. It's a size thing. It's a size thing? Oh, no. It's a skill set there at the top of the food chain in all fighting sports because Mexicans have heart. That's... That's well renowned. Now let's talk about the Mexican first. He's a reasonably small heavyweight, he's fast, he's mobile, <laughs> he doesn't have a beard, his cardio is supposedly off the chart, obviously he's a great wrestler, I think it was Arizona State, he wrestled it with CB Delaware. And Seems to be more continuous in his wrestling and Brock, Brock's a big sort of like, I just crunch you to the floor, whereas, as we've seen with the Congo fight, he just he takes him down, Congo's hitting him and he fails in that, he changes it up, he changes the direction. That, he boom, also looked as if he had a pillow chin against Congo, <laughs> <laughs> Congo hit him and he fell down, so I think that uh, the UFC is trying to overdress that, push that to the side, the fact that he, he can't take a very good hit. And also I think he's, he's not his boxing, but his, his power strikes are overrated. Okay, he KO'd Nogueira, but so did Mir. So I, I watched the UFC introduction to this fight. Brock Lesnar, prime he's time. big, he's bearded. I just can't get over the fact. Changed an old shed. Changed a shed. <laughs> he's got the he's got the Slayer tattoo, the Slayer can piece. He's got the the big sort of berserker tattoo. You know, he's got the Eric Paulson. Eric, oh man. Brock Lesnar Come is back looking mission beastly. Wrestling. Come back from the living dead. He's packed on more muscle. He looks phenomenal shape. He's got good diet, nutrition, and he's got the right mindset. I think the Shane Carbon um, fight has definitely put him 100% back in the. I need to buck up my ideas. You know, I mean, I've got to be. I think. I, I believe that Lesnar will win this, but the only thing I would say is. That I've seen Brock in the past struggle with a good wrestler, Randy, much smaller guy. He was able to pretty much negate a lot of his wrestling. Having said that, I still believe Lesnar will win. I think Velasquez's his chance is drag it out to round four, round five, where he will be tired. You can't be that size and not be tired. So my pick, Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, you! Yeah. Okay. Lesnar, excellent gents. Fight, Fight number two. two, Jake Shields versus Martin the Camp Campen. Okay, Jake Shields, this is his debut in the UFC. He's a seasoned campaigner. He's in a five year, 14 white fight win streak. Some of these fights obviously are. He's a bum shuffler. He's boring, but I'm just going through his record. <laughs> and that, that's not a reference to me gay or anything. That's a bum shuffler, as in he's a jiu-jitsu guy that wants to take it to the ground and nowhere else. He has good wrestling, but I hate to see anybody crawling towards someone to try and pull them down by the ankles. Having said that... <laughs> not afraid of that, you don't. <laughs> well, uh, there you go. That's personal. Thank you for the CP. So, what I'll go with is I'd say Capman. He's also very good in the ground, as we've seen against Paolo Thiago, who I tip to be the next welterweight champion. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. So I'd say, I don't think he's going to be able to keep it on his feet. You look at it, Neil Capman is quite big. He came down for 185 to 170. But by the same token, Shields is a big 170. He, well, he was yeah, middleweight yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah. He's in, uh, in strike force. He was a two-division champion. And he, he, he's good. He's fantastic. There's no doubt in his skill. He, he, the, his team, his team has uh, Diaz, who's a champ, who just beat KJ Nunes again. Um, they've got Melendez, who's a champ. Um, they've got him, who's a champ. No, I mean that is a great. You can see he's a crazy camp. Uh, you Are know, you both the Diaz brothers, Gilbert Melendez? Fantastic camp. The the breeding champions over there. He's got a right mentality, but. I personally don't like, and I can see what's going to happen, he's going to go in, he's going to exchange, he's going to pull guard, or he's trying to go and get down, 
and then it's going to go over. He's going to take Cartman into the deep water of fantastic jiu-jitsu. And on that, I think Cartman's not got a chance, and I definitely think that it's all about the sliding bum man. Well, I'm going to say Shields as well, although I have to say Cartman is coming off an impressive win, but I don't think he's going to have the necessary skills on the ground to get it done. So I'm going to go Jake Shields by a very boring victory. It's a very good introductory fight to say, here's your first fight and we're going to give you, uh, Ken, somebody really good. So who so, are you picking? Shields. Master one. Shields. Shields for me too. Okay, on that note, I think it's time for a word from our sponsors. Excellent. Hey, hey, Master Wang here. This is the Go Fast Sports Competition. The question is, which fantastic energy beverage company sponsors the real MMA show for your chance to win a Go Fast goodie bag? Just write it in the comments or on the website. Well done to Scotland. Much right. appreciated. Thanks for uh, I appreciate for all the support us. we get. It's brilliant. Okay, okay Master, uh, Master Wang. Master Wang. <laughs> Master Wang. That's be for the CP. Uh, just uh, fight three. Yeah. Diego Sanchez versus Paulo Tiago. Diego Sanchez. He is the yes man. He has done captain yes. in the past. Yes. 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 But he said no in his last fight when he got his ass handed to him. Do you think he still has a meditation chair? No, I can get smashed after he <laughs> his last fight. He's into buck fast now. I think I personally think Diego Sanchez has made a mistake coming back up to the middle. Uh, sorry, welterweight division. He only lost to one guy at lightweight. That's B J Penn. B J was destroying everybody at that time. Whereas uh, uh, welterweight previously, even before the was it Hathaway fight, he'd already lost to Cos. He'd already lost to Fitch. But the, the, the thing is, but he's went back. And what, what, he's went back to the, can, the, the New Mexican desert. He's, he's back went, to Jackson. He's back, he's back to Jackson. Jackson. And that was one of the major things why he left Jackson was Jackson started helping GSP. And GSP is obviously the welter, welterweight kingpin. So it, it, he felt that Jackson had betrayed him with a sort of, can, you're training him. You, you're training you can only train one top him. level guy. Huh? Um, um, but he's now back there. And obviously Jackson is a fantastic everything. They call him a wizard. We'll see. I still think that he's not in this fight. I think personally, see looking at it, when Diego Sanchez was in the welterweight division before, the guys won these big. Things have changed in the last year or two. Fighters are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and fighting at a much lower weight. So I think he's, he's always going to struggle now with the size and strength thing. His game is a top game, get them down being top. He's not going to get a lot of guys down now. And I think even if he does get Paolo Thiago down now, he's got a good chance of getting submitted because Paolo Thiago is electric in the ground. So I'm going to go Paolo Thiago, probably by submission, but there's a, there's a good chance of a knockout as well. I'm looking for a war, but I'm definitely going for Paolo Thiago and for the same reason. Fight 4 be for the CP? Yeah, uh, can I just say he's have picked 3 of the same gentlemen? It's Unheard very, of. very unlikely. Okay, fight 4, we have Tito Ortiz versus Matt DeMarc Hamill. TRT's versus his well former student for the, the tough series, Matt Hamill. I think both of them are really good wrestlers, both well, quite big. But Tito's got a bigger head. T but I think he should help with that though. <laughs> he's a bit of, he is special and I think he's had a bit of special help with that. So Tito has got the head advantage. Having said that though, we were talking earlier about Tito in his prime 2005-2006. He was fighting four times a year. Yep. 2007-8-9. He's only had one fight per year, and he's not had a fight in 2010. So I, I think that could either work against him. Oh, definitely totally work against him. Oh, aye. Although, if you believe Tito, his body's in ruins. So maybe the, the layoff has invigorated him. He's not dealing with his back, his aches, his pains, whatever else he's got. Helped him recover. But I think Matt Hamill, you know, he's solid, as we know. You know, he's... He's, he's a plodder with regards his... With regards his striking, and also, he doesn't have like, a good shoot. His takedown is basically... Kind of front headlocks you and drags you down. I don't think he's going to manage. I've never seen that, that that stuff before. The muscle more giving live demonstrations here on the Sorry, MMA I show. Sorry, put hands. The master <laughs> Wang. There's probably a lot of women out there very envious of me right now. <laughs> but I don't think he's going to be able to bully Tio Ortiz that way. Tio, okay, maybe he's a spent force, but he's still a big, strong guy and a pretty good wrestler. I'm actually going to pick Tito in this fight to win. I think it's a, f a fantastic matchup for Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill? Matt. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm uh, the CP. I, I think it's a fantastic uh, matchup for him just due to the fact that it's. They're similar in the, the sort of. The, if you like. They're doing MMA, if you like, two years ago. 
I don't think they'll be able to compete effectively against the new breed of MMA artists, but they've definitely got fantastic groundings and all the essentials. And because of that, I'm going to go for Matt Hamill. I think Matt Hamill's got the, 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 the grit, the determination to push forward. Hamill's coming off, he's beat Jardine, he's beat Matt Munoz. Okay, technically on paper they've got him as beating John Jones, but it, ah, obviously it. Jones was disqualified. But by the same token, he's lost to Franklin. But to be fair to him, though, he's got a loss to Bisping, which I believe he won that fight. So he has, he has, he's been able to be there with some good guys, but whether he can hang with Tito, who's a seasoned veteran, I don't believe it. Sam Tito. I'm going to go for a uh, Hamill. 